Oh, yeah, we're shaking, all right. This is Brian Shank back with you here on KQCK. We're here on KQCK.com, and we're rocking the mic today with a very special person. My guest today is an icon in the music business because he has been singing, recording, touring, and entertaining millions of devoted fans for, get this, over 50 years. That's right. I don't know what's smoother and finer after 50 years. A bottle of fine Glenn Levitt scotch or my next guest, the man who's rocking the mic with us right here on KQCK, Mr. Eddie Money. What's up, Money Man? What are you doing, buddy? You know, yeah, we've been uh, I got my record deal in the late 70s. I mean, we did, I did sell 27 million records. I, I should have saved the money. Who knew, Brian? But we're, <laughs> we're having a lot of fun out there. we got a lot of great fans, and I've heard a lot about KQCK, and uh, it's one of the first internet radio shows on there, so... I feel like I'm actually living in the present instead of the past. Uh, it's never <laughs> never a bad thing to live in the present once in a while. I, I still live in the past quite a bit. But before we go any further, Eddie, of course, first of all, thank you so much for joining us here on KQCK. The show is called Rockin' the Mic, and we're rocking the mic with Eddie Money. And across the board, I want to introduce my good friend and the program director, Mr. Joe C. Joe C., say hi to Eddie. Hey, Eddie. Always nice to talk to you again, my friend. How you doing? Absolutely, you know, and the one thing that we always enjoy is when you do come to Arizona, we always try to get to the programs and the shows because if you have not seen Eddie Money, go out there and check him out live. As a matter of fact, if you live in the Phoenix area, hell, if you live anywhere in the state of Arizona, get on down to this show Saturday, December the 7th. We're going to be having a great show at the Wild Horse Pass Casino and Hotel. It's going to be 8 o'clock. It's a wonderful show. If you have not seen him, I recommend you getting out there and checking it all out. And Eddie, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Um, First of all, I want to go back a little bit into your past because we all know the great songs that you've made. I mean, people out there know Two Tickets to Paradise, Walk on Water, I Think I'm in Love, Shaken. But i got to say something. There's so many hidden gems in your music collection that I'm sure a lot of people may not know about or just have forgotten and i would suggest any real eddie money fan to go back and rediscover the album no control which i have here right in my hands the official lp and i'm holding that up there right now there's two of my favorite songs in this album one is called a hard life the other one is running away and i want to talk about those two songs if we can uh a hard life some of the lyrics living on your own never far from home when you try to find a friend or two to stand by you that basically sounds like a song to me when you were first starting out in the music business and you were kind of, like you said, on your own and you know, away from home. And you also... Well, you know what? I, I, I was a police trainee and I quit the police department and I moved out to California and I couldn't go out and I couldn't drive my, my mother's car to the 7-Eleven and stuff like that. <laughs> I was out there on my own and, you know, I was mixing. It was like, uh, it was hard being out there and it's a hard life and it was just about, you know... We're going to, you know, cans of chef oil, you know, and uh, mayonnaise and tuna fish, you know, I mean, <laughs> I had some lean years there, but it's all part of growing up, I had to work my way to UC Berkeley, and of mm-hmm. course I worked on the famous Telegraph Avenue, back in the Berkeley riots for People's Park, I mean, there's so many great things that I did, and of course I got a record deal uh, way back when, when uh, Bill Graham, the legendary Bill Graham, who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Bill Graham. Uh, actually became my manager, and... Next thing I know, I was on Saturday Night Live and you know, going on the road with the Rolling Stones, playing with the Who and Fleetwood Mac and Steve Miller. Oh, we had so much fun, and it's it's still fun today. But then again, I wrote Hard Life about when actually before I got my, you know, really got my, my leg straight and happy stuff like that. You know, I've got a lot of crazy things happening in my career. Really. Oh, without a doubt. And like I said, the other great song on that called Running Away. Uh, now you're free and moving fast. It's not easy looking at the past. It gets harder every day. Running Away. Those are some awesome lyrics, and I think a lot of us can really relate to that song. And um, the guitar. Well, you know, the, uh, when that song is uh, when I got my first record deal, uh, I fell in love with a girl from here, Kate Finn, and Tony O'Tucky. It was Spanish girl. I'm not telling you, she was gorgeous. I mean, this shit could knock down more Jay Z than I could even think of it. But she looked amazing. And we still, we got together, but we were both young, and then she wanted to go back, and then she still got kind of some bad stuff, and was drinking too much. The song is about, basically, about, you know, running away from each other and, and leaving home. It's like, you know, it's, it's tough getting out there on your own, you know, like, 
getting out of your bedroom and getting out. You know, it's it's not easy growing up. Even for, even for kids today, it's it's. It's tough, you know, breaking away from the old house, but, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, those are great songs. And in that song, Hard Life, you reflect on your parents in that song. I know that you said in some interviews in the past that your dad was not really for you becoming a, a rock star. You know, he wanted you to follow in the in the uh, police spotlight. It sounds like your mother yeah. was a little bit more understanding and more supportive of your career. Are we pretty much accurate on that? Well, yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, see, Hard Life was actually... Uh, I wound up, uh, I was drinking a lot of vodka. One night I thought I was, you know, snorting some powder, which I don't recommend to anybody. <laughs> and it turned out to be Benetol, which is a bad thing for it, and it knocked out my kidneys. Oh, and, uh, and actually, I couldn't walk for like an entire year because it was a sciatic nerve in my left leg. Oh, jeez. And that song, Hard Life, is all about, uh, it's actually all about the overdose. Wow. Which the record company called The Accident. <laughs> and people see me, how did you ever overdose? Eddie's still there? Did we lose Eddie? I hope not. Eddie, if you can hear us, uh, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Um, no, we did. We lost him. We lost him? Well, okay. let's call him right back. Call him right back, Joe. Get him on the phone there. While you're doing that, we'll just go ahead and talk about a few things. Like I said, this this album right here, No Control, if you can get this on CD or, or iTunes or wherever you can go on this, you definitely want to check this out. The first whole side of this album, listen to the songs. Shaken, Running Away, Think I'm in Love. Hard Life, No Control. And we just talked about two of those songs, Hard Life and Running Away. If you have not heard those songs, I recommend you going up on uh, YouTube, listening to those, because those are two awesome songs. If you listen to the emotion in Eddie's voice in regards to what he's talking about in those songs, it just, it'll blow you away. Okay, Eddie's, back, two, Eddie's yeah, back with two us. Two great songs. So, Eddie, it looks like we lost you there, but we got you back on here. Hey, guys, what's up, man? Hey, we can hear you a lot better now. How you doing, pal? <laughs> I kind of lost you for a minute there, you know? That's okay. We lose everybody once in a while. So, <laughs> In case you're just tuning in, everybody, to KQCK, we are rocking the mic with my good pal, Mr. Eddie Money, who will be here in concert at Phoenix, Arizona, at the Wild Horse Pass Casino and Hotel, Saturday night, December 7th. Get on down to the show. And I know you love Arizona, Eddie. No, bro. Are you there? I'm here, buddy. Okay, I, I was just saying, you, you you love Arizona. You love coming out here and playing. Well, you know what? We got a lot of great friends in, in, in the state of Arizona. I knew what Chandler is. I got a buddy. That, matter of fact, one of my roadies is mother lives in Chandler right now. So we're gonna have a great time out there. And, you know, my grandparents used to live in Sun City. So uh, oh, wow. You know what that. You know, you know when they get old, when you open up the freezer and there's a can of pledge in there. <laughs> a can of pledge. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you know what's even funnier, Eddie, is they're probably dusting the furniture with some pork chops, so that's even uh, even funnier. So, Oh, my gosh, that's I great. Gotta, I got to tell you, I love to eat. You know, but, you know, you know, my wife's got me in the treadmill and all so that, you know, and now the doctor tells me I'm pre-diabetic. I said, who is a pre-diabetic? He's telling me he wants me to, you know, have two, you know, Lay off the pasta, the cake, and the ice cream. I just said, "Why don't you just shoot me in the head in the parking lot?" <laughs> no, don't do that. We got to have Eddie around here for at least twenty, thirty more years. Don't, don't have her do that to you, Eddie. Uh, you know what? You, you you're well, talking, you know, you're talking about yeah, food. I got to tell, tell you something. You know, I told my wife I love that she said, "Get off me, give me a break." You know? <laughs> no, but my my wife down. I spend it on my hair. I'm having a good time out there. You know, we had 14 songs in the top 100. If you want to hear "Baby a Bond," two tickets, take me home tonight. Think I'm a love, shaking. Want to mm-hmm. go back? Mm-hmm. I'll goodbye. You know, we're, just, we're very blessed. We got the big guy upstairs. Did bless me with a lot of hits, and I thank him every day for that. You got that right. And your biggest hit hit number four on the charts. Uh, take me home tonight with the original bad girl of rock and roll, Ms. Ronnie Spector, who I think just turned 70 this year. That's incredible. Um, that and was. She, and, you know, and she still looks amazing. She We're does. We're still very good friends, and I went to the show a couple of weeks, about a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. and she, you know, she was great. But she wasn't allowed to do Be My Little Baby. Why? Can you believe that Phil Spector still got his hands around the neck, even up there in jail. Can you believe that? Wow. No kidding? That's amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I- well, you know, he's, he's a very unhappy camper, which is ridiculous. Which is, hmm. You know, there was a... I mean, if there was a rumor going around L.A., if, if, if Phil Spector and Shaw were shot in the beer, don't go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shot in the beer. <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> freaking funny. But I got to tell you, I, I really don't think he killed the woman. I saw a special on TV with Al Pacino playing, uh, playing him, and I really don't think that, Phil, you know, the blood evidence and everything, I think that he got slammed and he's in jail for some... I don't think he really killed the woman, but nevertheless... Uh, 
He must have, must have, maybe a lot of bad karma just caught up with him. Who the hell knows? It, you know, it, I don't it's possible, like you said, just don't go out for a shot and a beer with him, of course. Uh, you know, i got to say every something. Time, but, but I tell you, every time you play Take the Hill tonight, He's still making money up there in jail. I was just gonna—I was just gonna ask you that—is he still making money on that song? It's funny you said that. I, I just—I was gonna ask. About that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you something too, Eddie. You know, Jimmy Lyon, guitar player from back then. Um, I'm gonna tell you something. Two tickets to paradise. That guitar solo on Two Tickets to Paradise is one of my top five favorite solos ever. That guitar blows me away every time I hear that. It's just amazing. Well, Jimmy Lyons, I mean, if you think about it, the Ainsley Dunbar used to, Ainsley come down, Ainsley used to come in down to see him. He was one of uh, Santana's favorite guitar players. I remember when uh, wow. Ronnie Machos was alive. Everybody loved Jimmy Lyons. He just had that. He was very, very melodic. He was great. He was a lot of fun to play with. But, mm-hmm. uh, I know he, he left my band, and then he bought a plane. He was flying for a while. Then he was working for such Tina Turner, and uh, he just got a blues album out. I was going to ask him if he wanted to come out and do some acoustic shows with me, but I don't think he, I don't think, I, I, I don't know. I, Jimmy and I, we're, we're still good friends, but uh, he lives in Atlanta and he doesn't want to, he does, I guess the road burns a lot of people out. I enjoy the road, you know. Yeah, well, I don't I, have to make the bed, you know, I don't have to make the bed, I got the coffee <laughs> machine, you know. You ain't got to worry about your TV. wife, you ain't got to worry about your wife telling you, know? you what to eat around the house and what you can't eat around the house, you know, and you can sneak that, you know, Twix My bar. Wife, <laughs> my, my wife, we got dogs covered with fords, and she runs it not to the kitchen. You know, everything's got to be, I can't stand, uh, you know, being in the house with the wife, you know, she's always cleaning up the floor. She's a neat freak. Yeah, that's you know, good. it's ridiculous. Well. I mean, like, but, and me, you me, I could care less, you know, but yeah. whatever. She's a beautiful girl, and, you know, you got to put the dishes in the sink and put the glasses in the cabinet, ba 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 No smoking in the house, you know. She's got Oprah on the TV set. I go crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you jumped think, the, I jumped out the kitchen window when it wasn't even open. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, behind every good man is a hell of a good woman, and sounds like you got one right there. Imagine that, putting glasses in the cabinets and stuff. I just can't believe the Oprah on the TV. Oprah. you got to get rid of the Oprah. Oprah. I, I don't, you know what? All the other stuff, Eddie, with with the with the glasses and don't smoking in the house and stuff like that, I can understand that. But make sure you get that Oprah off the TV screen. That's horrible. What's next, Doctor Oz? Oh. Then, then, then you got to take the Cialis. Gives you thirty six hours. I need forty eight because I forgot to clean the counter to take the garbage out. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god! <laughs> we're, we're when having... you're my age, thirty six hours ain't enough. Let me tell you. <laughs> I thought they were supposed to get a little bit more allows when they got older. That's an old wives' tale. I'm telling you that to fact the life, you know? Well, they always say if you have an erection lasting more than four hours, you call your doctor. I'm like, you know, he doesn't turn me on. I wouldn't be calling him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I got a beautiful wife. You know, my wife, she doesn't eat meat. She jogs five miles a day. And wow. she, you know, God bless looks, you. you know, she looks amazing, you know? That's and incredible. She's got, you know, I was getting a little heavy, and she said, I told my wife I love that she can get off me. So, you know. <laughs> You know, Eddie's going to be doing a concert this weekend. He'll probably do the stand-up show after the concert. I would look forward to doing that. You should get into some stand-up comedy. No, no, doing, you know, doing the show, I, it's like, a, you know, a Bruce Springsteen or a Tom Petty or movie blues. I want them to take the music very seriously. And then when I get out there and I start telling jokes, I mean, the worst thing in the world about the Internet and this YouTube is I was getting around on stage and I said, I said, I'm sorry I drank that quarter of vodka. I'll try to give you a good show. Well, I've been sober for three and a half years this time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm getting a phone call from my mother-in-law. He went back there and he said, what is everybody talking about? You can't eat just to on YouTube. People think you're out there getting murdered again. It's crazy. <laughs> You know, and I'll tell you what, it's amazing that we live in this day and age with technology and everybody's listening. Big Brother is always watching. And yeah, you're right. You could say something like that, you know, 20, 30 years ago, nobody would pick up on it. And now it's everywhere. So you really got to be careful out there. And we are talking to Mr. Eddie Money right here on Rocking the Mic on good old KQCK. Brian Shank hanging with you here. Joe C. across the board. And Eddie, I got to bring this up because after we interviewed you last February of 2012, a few months later, I'm sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden, this Geico commercial comes on, <laughs> and out walks Eddie Money from his Eddie Money travel agency, and he starts singing, he's got two tickets to paradise. That is the funniest freaking commercial I have ever seen, because when I first saw it, I was like, that's, that's Eddie Money. And I'm like, oh my God, he looks awesome, and he's, you know, two tickets to paradise. And he, no, we wanted four. Pack your bags and leave tonight. No, that's next month. <laughs> it's just freaking hilarious how did that come about 
Well, you know what? My wife, uh, my wife got, she wanted to get back on TV. She's a good one to go. And there was an older woman that was going to use a, they were going to use a CD player. And I was going to go hit it. And it's this really old lady that was a very accomplished Broadway actress, I might add. Uh-huh. And then I had a fire her because I wanted to get my wife in the commercial. And then my wife's going to pedicure and a manicure and change an office a thousand times. I mean, she looked like a million, she looked like a million bucks. But what happened is, is they thought the one was funny and, without the music. So, so, so my wife wound up on the editing room floor. And I got to tell you, she wasn't that happy about that. And if you ask my wife how she liked the commercial, she said, he sounds pitchy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You know, she won't let you smoke in the house. She won't let you put a dirty dish in the sink. You know, she's got Oprah on the TV, and then she says you're pitchy. You know, if she wasn't so damn beautiful and a nice woman, I'd probably get a little upset. But, you know, it, it, I guess they're, they're always your own worst critic. You know what I mean? I, but God bless your oh, wife. Yeah. We've been together for 26 years, and, you know, they keep you honest. And, you know, I think yeah. that's, you know, when they, when they dump you and you realize how much you miss them and they take you back, you know, that's what life's all about. I right. don't want to live without, you know, you think I want to raise these five kids without, uh, what, are you crazy? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, baby. I got two, and it's hard enough on your own as well with that. But, you know, um, it, it's way better watching that commercial than that pig or the gecko coming up there. I wish they put Eddie Money up there a little bit more often, you know. It kind of bothers yeah, me. Yeah, we did. You did a beauty rush commercial, and now Michael Bolton's doing all these Honda commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I got, you know, I, got to, I got to get back on TV. Who the heck knows? We'll see what else. Darn right. You know, uh, you are from Levittown, New York, and I always call you the Lord of Levittown. And um, do you get to go back to your old stomping grounds quite a bit, or do you still live in that same area, or do you do you I'm visit? Let, let's say, my wife just got an apartment on uh, Central Park South with 58th Street, right across the street from Central Park. Okay. I mean, uh, Lady, not, Lady Gaga lives in my building. Is when, that... I'm in, when I come back home, like I'm, I'm back home right now, I go right back out to, to a plane that's Levittown. You know, my favorite joints, hang out with my friends. I stay in my sister's basement. They said, how can you tell us at the, sh- the door? I recognize the shoes from the bottom window. <laughs> that's awesome. That is so good, man. I, you know, and, and, and it's it's good to have your old, you know, your old stomping grounds where you can go back and see. Because, you know, I'm from Illinois. And speaking of which, after this weekend, you're going to be in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin next week. And, um, oh, yeah, but- and I love Wisconsin, like I say, and I love walleye and the beer bat and stuff. I mean, most people up there, in Illinois, but, you know, my, my actually my uh, my keyboard players from Illinois. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the greatest people in the world. And they're really into that college football. I love that. Come yep. On. That's where I'm originally from. I'm from northern Illinois, Gurney, just uh, around Waukegan area. Yeah, you guys, you guys had a pretty good year. I got to give you that. Yeah, and IU, baby, we're playing awesome. We might uh, even get to the Rose Bowl if things work out our way, man. I'd love to see that happen. I'd love to see I that. I got my fingers I know that USC ain't going to be this. So what do I like here? <laughs> we are talking to Eddie Money, a true icon and legend in this rock and roll business, and he's going to be playing this Saturday night, Wild Horse Pass Casino. If you live anywhere nearby, get on out there, go get a ticket, enjoy the show. It's a hell of a facility. Very quaint, very nice. It's a, uh awesome place to watch a show, and we're getting a little bit of feedback there, but let's see if we can... Uh, Work that out there. Apologize for that. Hey, Eddie, you know, all the albums you've made, you know, we talked about them and everything like that, but do you have a favorite album that when you look back and say, you know, I loved making that, all the songs were great, all the engineering was awesome, the production values were top-notch, do you have one particular album that you can just sit there and say, that's the one? Well, I think that No Control is my best record. No Control? I agree. I got it right here in my hand. And my second best record was the first one. Okay. Yep, Eddie Murray. Yeah, at, at the third one, at the tour stuff, we made a lot of great records. You know, it's a, you know, we always had a walk on water or an I'll get by or, you know, it's not shaking. I mean, it, it was always fun to get out there. And, you know, back in those days, I wanted to make sure that it was on college radio. But at the same time, I wanted to be on AM radio. You mm-hmm. know, I wanted that baby home on. I wanted that take me home tonight. Because a lot of people, I to, you know, I was, I was very big on FM radio and college rock and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now we got a new song out. It's not that new, but I'm trying to scrape some money to the Intrepid Fallen Hero Foundation. These kids coming back from Afghanistan with these head trauma injuries. So if you go to my website, which people don't know websites anymore, but uh, so called one more soldier coming home. You can that also check that out. You uh, you can go on YouTube yeah, and see that too. It's a beautiful song. It's a good song, but it is a beautiful song. 
You know, I, I like the words too. There's there's a couple of lyrics in there. It says, "Daddy would be proud if he were here today that you uh, chose the soldier way." And if you watch that video, it's hard. It's it, it, if you don't cry or get a lump in your throat by watching that video, one more soldier coming home with Eddie Money. You know, standing in Arlington Cemetery, standing on the side, the soldier walking on the bridge with his wife and his kid. Uh, it's just extremely, extremely patriotic and beautiful, and the way that it all just gels together. Your presence in the video is very well done. And that song is top notch. And again, you you are raising money for that, so please go to Eddie Money's website and check that out. And um, I I love the song. I love the video. It's fantastic. You look great in it, and just tremendous emotion in that song and the video. Just awesome. Well, you know, you run into these folks that got the kids over there, and I gotta say, kids, because I'm in my early sixties. So I mean, sure. and a lot of these kids, they don't join the Air Force and the Army and the Navy and the Marine Corps. Because they're thinking about coming back and getting a, going to junior college. Mm-hmm. They're over there because they love this country. That's what it's all about. Right, right. You know, people that are serving in the military. And I got to tell you, every time I get off a plane, I make sure that us and the other civilians give these kids a standing ovation getting off the plane like the Beatles and all this and Oh, that's awesome. They do so much for us. I really do. You know, and, and I do the I do the same thing when I'm like at the store, or at a gas station, or wherever I may be. You know, whenever I see someone in uniform who's representing our beautiful country, the United States of America, I always make sure whatever I'm doing, I stop, I walk over to him or her, and I say to them, shake out. I reach out my hand, I shake. I say, thank you very much for your service to our country. God bless you, and may you always you stay know what? safe. That's because you're good people. Yeah. That's why I like you. That's why I'm on the show right now. Well. You know? I appreciate that. And you're a good person, too, by doing what you did, raising money for that. You know, there's a thing where a lot of people have a lot of money, and they have a lot of fame like yourself who have been there and done that. And, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, I'll go to this, I'll go to that. But for you to do a video, a song, and then put this on there to raise money from your website, that's a real American, baby. And I can feel the patriotism right there, and that's just that's just truly amazing. So God bless you for that. You know, we're out there with silver T-shirts. My, my, my T-shirts are on 50. Seventy eight dollars for the like the Rolling Stones. I remember I went to the Rolling Stones show with my wife. The t shirt was a hundred dollars. I had no money to get drunk. And she said, That was the best show he ever took me to. Twenty five, thirty bucks and I'm out there signing the shirts. And when you get out there and you sign the shirts, you find out what the how your voice sounded, you find out how I I asked the ba- I asked the fans out there what song that they like. Actually when you listen to my set list the fans wrote that set list, not me. Right. Over the years, fans wrote the set list, and it works great. We get two or three encores a night. We come back and do shaking, and everybody rock and roll the place. And That's we open up the show with Baby Hold On, and the girls wanted to hear Endless Nights again, so we put that in. We got Walk on Water. It's, it's a really a fun set. You know, I rediscovered this No Control album, like I told you about here earlier in the interview, and this I agree with what you said about being your best album, because that, to me, is the best right there. And you know, the song No Control, and I don't know if you've heard this before from other people, but you know, the beginning of that song with the guitar and the beat, it kind of reminds me a little bit of New York Groove by Ace Fraley. Have you ever been told that before? Well, you know what? That mine was before his. He stole it from me, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say anybody stole anything. I'm just saying it sounded similar. No, but but... Saying, I mean, if you listen to Your Little Runaway by Bon Jovi, it's actually take a little bit. Yeah. Well, you know, when you got a good song, you're going to steal from somebody, and yeah. somebody's going to steal from you. Yeah, no, you're right I mean, about that. If you listen to Dancing in the Dark, it's actually a big crash. Well, our, our lips are sealed. I mean, it's like everybody. You know you what? Know, it's only five or six chords of great music. I mean, rock and roll, you, you, you should steal from each other. That's what it's all about. The big crash. You're, from each other. You're borrowing from each other. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The big crash, one of my favorite Eddie Money songs, stealing makeup from her mama's purse, and from there it only got worse. <clears throat> love the song, <laughs> love the video. Hey, I know these songs. You know I'm a big fan of yours, Eddie. You know this. Thank you so much. I did love Big Crash, but we had to, we had to take that out of the set, and we had to take peace and our time out of the set. Oh. We had to take my friends and my friends out of the set oh, because I love my we only, we've only got 90 minutes and you've got to give them, you know, if you don't do a walk on water or take me off tonight, I don't yeah. want to be a rock and roll star yeah. or really got a hold on me or no control. You know, the fans, you know, they want to hear their favorite songs. Well, you talked about My Friends, My Friends. That's also on side two, the third song on No Control. And, you know, another great song I wanted to ask you about, Passing by the Graveyard, a song for John B. Can you tell us a little bit about who that song is about and what it what it means? Well, you know, I did the Saturday Night Live. Uh, John Belushi and I got pretty close. We were hanging out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a great guy. But then when he got drunk, no, no offense to, God, to John, God bless his soul, but when he, it was always any money. But as soon as he got drunk, it was Mahoney, and he, he was a really kind of a nasty Chicago drunk, so to speak. 
Okay. And actually, when he got out, I turned him on to Chateau Marmont, and I turned him on to that, that, that was the bungalow that I used to use. You know, Loser John was, was a top break for everybody, and uh, it just made me realize, and then I had a drug overdose, and, you know, I tell you, you, you think you're invincible, you know, you, you know, you get rich and you get famous, or you just get really well known. Mm-hmm. You can do a lot of silly things. You know, mm-hmm. I, tell, I tell these kids, I got to tell you how many people I try to get home after these gigs. I'm glad that I'm playing in the casino because everybody can get drunk, have a good time, and go out and gamble, and they go up to the room. Right. That's what it's all about. Right, yeah. No, I, I worry about these fans, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I, I know you do. You love your fans, and I know you love always taking time out for them. And before we end the interview, Eddie, I want to do a little thing with you here because I like doing this when I can. It's called q and A. I I just throw a few things out at you, and you know, the first thing that pops in your head, you just go ahead and answer it, okay? You ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay. Here we go. To Eddie Money. If there was one song I wish I wrote, it would be... Yesterday. Ah, by the Beatles. Nice. Wow. Yes. Very good. That's one of my favorite Beatles songs right there. Why, why, would you, why do you wish you wrote that? Just because you like it so much or the meaning? or? Uh, because it speaks from the heart. It does. All my troubles seem so far away. Come yeah. on. I mean, come on. It's like, you know, it says it all. I mean, yeah. anybody can hit you with lyrics that put you in a certain place and time and it gets to your soul. That's what music's all about. Right on, baby. Right on. That's why I can relate to some of these great Eddie Money songs like A Hard Life and Running Away. Like I told you, those are very deep thought-provoking songs. So that's, a good, that's a good answer. Okay, number two here. Living or dead, name one guitar player you would like to record with that you haven't. Yeah, dead or alive? Yep, dead or alive, baby. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I really like the kid that plays at ACDC. Ace Angus Young. I think because, you know, what he the way he plays guitar, it's just like there's never a bad note. I Everything know. just, I don't know about this, of course it's from Australia or something. I don't know who he listened to or what he was doing, but the guy is just, you know, is, when he plays lead, it's a beautiful thing. And, of course, Jimmy Lyon, another great yeah. guitar player. Of course, and my guitar player, Tommy Gervin, amazing guitar. Yeah, he's I love Joe Satriani, yeah. but I got to tell you, hands down, my favorite guitar player, and I was lucky to see him four times with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, Jimmy was awesome playing. How about Jimi Hendrix learning to play guitar on a right-handed guitar, turning it around and playing it left-handed? That right there is amazing for one. And then just what he yeah. got, what he got out of a when guitar. I saw, him play, I, when I saw him play slap with a with a, with a, with a, with a beer can at the Carousel Ballroom in 1969. You guys are too young. I was there to see, I saw the Cream, I saw Led Zeppelin, that first show of Country Joe and the Fish, I saw Janis Joplin, Big Brother, and all the company. I swear, after Janis died, I was the first guy to, you know, they hired me to sing, like Janis' place, but Nick Rapp and I just came in and fired me, but it was all for the better. You know, wow. but, you know, you know I'm, a lot of I'm glad you, you said know, Angus Janice, Young. My daughter's a great singer, you gotta hear her, she's great, yeah, my daughter. Jessica, she get really well. Well, yeah, and you know, and two things. I'm glad you said Angus Young because he is my all time favorite guitar player because the blues and the rock mix is just tremendous. And like you oh, said, yeah. never a bad note. And you know, I asked Dee Snyder that same question from Twisted Sister. He said Angus Young as well. So that's incredible. You guys have the meeting of the minds there. That's that's just awesome. Now let's talk about Jesse. And my favorite, and my favorite rhythm guitar player is Keith Richards. Oh yeah. If you listen to the, the Winos album, man, it's just amazing, you know? Yeah. It's like, he's got a song called Eileen on there, and it just kicks, it just like, just it just keeps on kicking and kicking and kicking. I mean, the guy's are an amazing rhythm the top of his melody lines are amazing. Now, you talk about the song Eileen by Keith Richards. Let's talk about a song that you made called Maureen. That's on the uh, Life for the Taking album. I heard that right. this song is about Maureen McCormick from the Brady Bunch. Is that a rumor or is that true? Well, you know, Maureen McCormick used to live up the street from me, and uh, I remember when she was a bit of a bad girl, and she was dating Ron Emerson, and boy, they were really powdered out wow. back in the day. But the song Maureen was about nobody. The only reason I called the song, I wrote the song Maureen, is because it rhymes with dream. I wanted to write a song about dream, and I was always having a dream, and I just kept dreaming about a chick, I don't know, and I just came up with the name Maureen, just like, you know, just rhymes with, you know, I'm a poet, you know it. I just hope I don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> poet, you know it. Hope you don't blow it. I hear you, baby. Uh, okay, another question for you. My biggest pet peeve is uh, my biggest pet peeve is losing 
Mary put the remote control. <laughs> Oh, I hear you there, my friend. You know, I'm laughing because it's true. I hate that too. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I think mean, you know, it's under the blanket, or I took it in the kitchen, or it's in the bathroom, and I'm, you know, yeah. and everybody's going to be. You got to see this. It's on right now. You got to see this. And go, wow, my God. <laughs> You know, it's, you know, it's funny. I think George Carlin, the great comedian, God rest his soul, he had a thing about losing things. He made a little comedy act. He says, you know, you ever hate when you lose something? I think when you die, you get it all back. You go back up to heaven, there's 84,000 Bic pens. There's 212 <laughs> cigarette lighters. There's, there's four. Yeah, you know. and you know, it's true. I mean, you, you, and then when you lose it, you start looking in places where you know it's not even there, but you look anyway. You know? I, I, and then another, another pet peeve I have is when they order room service. And when the person comes to the door and they know who I am, then I got to give them a bigger tip. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say because they bug you for autographs or something like that. I, I kind of like it better when I get a little oh, ride from Morocco good. or from Iran. You know, it's even better for me. Here's two bucks, you know. Uh, you're speaking. You're ready money. And I'm going to give like seven dollars. Whoa, anybody gave me seven bucks, you know. <laughs> That's why your last name is Money. And, That's great. Uh, tell me what's one of the weirdest things or the weirdest thing that anybody has ever asked you to sign. Uh oh. Well, I mean, I've asked if a lot of people have asked me to sign dress constantly. A lot of people have asked me to sign rear ends and stuff like that. But you know what? My wife would kill me. I mean, I you know, I, there's no way in the world. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, when I get home at night, I don't want to be uh, you know getting excited over the J C Penny bra ads. <laughs> <laughs> I do, uh, but you know, it's funny. I don't understand when people ask to sign their bodies because. That eventually washes off. Why would you want anybody's autograph being washed off your body? You know, I, I've heard people. You know, I, you know? I, I don't know. I remember one time that Willie Mays. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Willie Mays. I asked Willie Mays for his autograph, and you know, I guess maybe he knew who I was, and he gave me his autograph. And then a couple of little kids that was really important asked them for his autograph, and he said no. Yeah. So I turned around and gave him my autograph. Really, that's true. You know, I've heard a lot of things about Willie Mays being a real jerk wow. about that. Yeah, I heard he only sells them. I hate to hear that. I do too. I hope any. I well, mean, no, I don't give a. You listen. You look at the catch, man. That he made. They called it the catch. Willie Mays was an amazing ball player. You know what I'm telling you? Oh yeah. And he was a New York, and he was a giant. Come on, he's a New York boy. Oh, great. I love the guy. No, I'm not saying anything bad about his play because with him, say hey Willie, baby, he was great. But yeah, I've heard that about him with uh, with his habits and stuff like that. Do you, uh, do you, you know, speaking of signing stuff and whatever, do you probably get asked almost every day for an autograph by somebody either like randomly? Or, I mean, do people just still to this day come up and say, hey, I you know? You, I was supposed I just moved it to Manhattan for a meeting today because I'm, I'm doing, talking about putting my Broadway show back out. And they had truck drivers wave, waving to me, people on the street. Yo, laddie, what's happening? I came, <laughs> and it's just a Geico commercial. Now I got to shave and wash my hair before I go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> and, everybody, you know, and everybody's got cell phones. I mean, I feel like Mick Jagger or Paul McCarthy are going, leave me alone. But now, you know what? You got to be nice to the fans. And yeah. you know what? The, the greatest people in the world, people. You don't want to say, I met Eddie Money, he was a real jerk, he wouldn't sign my dope, you know. Right. right. I mean, these kids got, you know, it's one. And now with, with, with everybody, you know, with the kids, the parents go over me, and now you get kids in the audience knowing all the lyrics to think I'm in love mm -hmm. and take me home tonight. I mm -hmm. mean, they're singing right along and they're like six, seven years old. <laughs> I mean, that's a real blessing. I mean, that's, it makes me real, really good, you know? You know, speaking of I think I'm in love, I don't think I, t I don't know if I told you this story or not the last time we talked almost two years ago, but I got to tell you this, and this is the honest to God truth. I'm not screwing around. You know, I almost died listening to your song I think I'm in love. And let me go ahead and just tell you the story if I can real quick. And I'm not and I sw I swear to God are you, this, are, you, are, you, are you being are you being sarcastic? No, no, did you almost die? Really? No, no sir, I'm being honest to God. I swear on my kids it's a true story. I could not make this up if I had to. And there's also oh, a date in this that's going to I this is weird. When I saw your concert was on December 7th, okay? Okay. This happened to me on December 7th when I used to live in Illinois where it was always icy and snowy and everything else around that oh, area. Boy, okay. let, yeah. me, let me tell you this story. This this is this will freak you out. I was driving home from a bar and unfortunately, and I hate to admit this, but I had a few, you know, beers in me and everything else and I was driving when I probably shouldn't have. It was like 2 in the morning. I'm driving home and as soon as I'm coming around my road, get ready to pull in, I think I'm in love comes on the radio. Now that's my favorite Eddie Money song. I said, I'm going to go around the block and just listen to the song, finish it, and then pull into the driveway. I'm coming around this corner, and on the corner to the right is an apartment complex. 
I turned the corner, and of course, like I said, it's on December 7th. It's cold, it's wet, it's icy, it's rainy. I hit a slick spot in the road. I slid sideways probably about 30 feet into two cars. Now, I didn't realize I didn't realize until I got out of the car and looked at what was going on because I was, I was shaking and, and freaking out and everything. Eddie, I got out of the car, and as I looked at the car... There was a fence post, like those big square fence posts that are probably about, you know, a foot in diameter that sticks in the ground yes. with signs. I had yes. I hit that post with my car and when I hit it, it shot straight back through my windshield and it missed my head by six inches. And had that had that not missed, I would have been dead right there and then. And I didn't realize realize it until right. i got the car i pulled that sucker out out of fear and anger and i threw it into the river like the little pond there next to the apartment complex and i literally just Ugh. sat there and looked at the hole in the windshield where i almost died and it was be- i had i think i'm in love and it was on december 7th i shit you not is there a good part of that story though no it's just the memory that i always have whenever i hear that song and, and you know what i always feel like eddie was with me you know like oh he was, gotcha there we he, go there we go see eddie was with me when I was in the car, and he knew, hey, twenty something years from now, kid, you're going to be on the radio with me talking and everything else. It, but it, <laughs> every time, <laughs> every time I hear that I song, you, I mean, it's not something weird like that. When I had the drug overdose, uh, what happened is they took me to the John Muir Hospital, and I was Baby Hold On was on the radio, and I was in this twi- because I blew out my kidneys. I had to get my kidneys to homicide. I killed the sciatic nerve of my left leg. I people thought I was never going to walk again. And I was in a twilight state, and I remember seeing these people in masks and stuff like that. And they played the radio in the operating room, and B.B. Old Ron was in the radio, and they're going, this is Eddie Money, we're operating on. I couldn't believe it. And it wow. was a true story. It was like a bit of dream. It was horrible. Oh, my God. And then I woke up like a week later, and I'm going, what the hell is going on? And I'm, wow. And I realized what happened to me. It's terrible. Isn't, isn't that crazy? It's just... I was, <sighs> and there I was in the operating room, and, you know, and that baby was on the radio, and I'm looking at these people in the mask. It's almost like that video, Take a Little Bit. Remember you saw the video, Take a Little Bit? Sure, sure. When they had with the nurse with the mask done and stuff like that? Mm-hmm, yep, Take a Little Bit. That was the same thing. That was actually, uh, that was from something that I felt like was in the South Korea. Wow. Wow, it's incredible. I mean, some of the things we go through in life, it just it's scary. But I swear to God, every time that I think I'm in love comes on, that's the first thing that clicks in my head. True, honest-to-God story on my kids that happened. And the weird part was, I remember it was on December 7th because we were talking about it with the cops. Oh, it's Pearl Harbor Day. Looks like you had your own accident or something like that. I can't remember exactly what he said. But fortunately, I got out of it. I didn't get in any trouble for it. I had to pay, of course, for the damages through my insurance with the car. But uh, I'll never forget that. And uh, whenever I hear that song, I think about it. But I, but every, every other song of any money, I always smile. Did you get a DUI that night or not? No, I got out of it. You know why? My dad worked for the county, and it was a county cop. So my dad came there and started talking to him about stuff with the county and people he knew and everything. And I think the guy right. was like, okay, well, you know, just get him home and get him to bed yeah. and we'll take care of this. So I, I got lucky. My dad saved my ass a few times in my right. day. And I, I love yeah, my dad. Yeah, I was, you know, I was the son of a cop, too. And let's face it, the first one over the fence. So if you're the son of a cop, you're always... You're always the first one over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, man. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm glad you didn't become a police officer because we've never had the chance to really enjoy and just love the music you've pumped out over the years. Like I said, 50 years because you're 64. You told in an interview with Dick Clark back on American Bandstand, I think 78 or 79 or whatever it was, that you started really doing this when you were 14 years of age. That's that's amazing, man. Yeah, I was, you know, I was playing rock and roll, Chuck Berry and Little Richard, before the Beatles came out, I was in a rock band before the Beatles. I mean, I'm as old as I'm as old as Moses, for Christ's sake. I heard you're so <laughs> sick. I mean, Rod, Rod, I'm younger than Rod Stewart. I think I'm the same age as Bruce Springsteen. I don't really know, but I feel good. I still got my hair. I'm, you know, my weight's down. You know, I, I mean, it's you no. Know, well, I mean, I can't look. At, I can look at all these beautiful women. I, you know. I might have ate, but I can still look at the menu. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't want to say you're old, but I did hear that your social security number was five. Um, so, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know I love you, baby. I would never mean that, but I just thought that was. You know what? I did, I did a show about three weeks ago, and this really gorgeous girl. I mean, she had a great little body. I remember, it reminded me of my wife. She was right below my feet, and she was whimpering and I'm singing, and I'm, I'm, I hear whimpering and crying, and the nose is sniffling. 
I looked down and this this girl, I, I, she was crying her eyes out, and her makeup was running down her pretty face. And during the solo, when I could actually talk to her and to fix us, I said, "Baby, what's fun?" She said, "You're standing on my hand." <laughs> You know, Eddie, I'll tell you, you know, you are, you are absolutely one of the greatest that has ever walked this earth in terms of entertaining. And I know that Bill Graham, you talked about Bill Graham, the legendary Bill Graham, uh, God rest his soul. You know, he did mention you in one of the interviews I read online about that you were born to be an entertainer, a performer, and a singer. I mean, that was your, you know, God's gift, your, your calling. And I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, just thank you for all the great work you've done over the years, man. I'm glad you're still out there. I found that the best way to beat the cheerleaders without being on the football, if you weren't on the football team, is be the rock band in high school. That's it. <laughs> hey, you're right, man. Get out there and get the chicks, sing it, grow your hair, you know, and just make hey, it. <laughs> hey, the chicks love the guys, you know. Anybody, you, you put a guitar on, you sit beside a set of drums or a keyboard, come on. Yeah. It's for life. You got that right. Hey, Eddie, before we go, is there anything that you'd like to say to all the fans out there who are listening right now live? And please, before you do that, don't hang up after we uh, do that because we want to just talk right. to you. We want to talk to you off the air for a second about something. But uh, if you could just, to all the fans out there listening right now, a word from Eddie Money to his fans. Well, I want to tell everybody out there that I just can't believe that I've been around so long and, and the good Lord has blessed me with so many great people that, you know, they like my music because it's a psychiatrist would say, Eddie Money represents the American male inadequacies. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, he, was not, he wants somebody to take him home tonight and maybe hold on to him and he wants two tickets to Barrett, you know. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine I said, sir, it was just me. Well, your music sells because you, you represent the American male inadequacies. So, so, well, whatever. I mean, we sold a lot of records. I've had a lot, sold a lot of records, had a lot of fun. It's got a beautiful wife. Of the way I've got, I've, and I've got five kids. Yeah. I'll do anything to get out of the house. Come on. Atta boy. You know, I know you're coming to Arizona, and I know that you're maybe a little bit uh, apprehensive about coming to Arizona because you know you are close to the Mexican border, you know, and because you shot a man on the Mexican border. You know, I just want to make sure that you're, <laughs> you, know, you know, I hope you're over that. Hey, give me some water. You got to give me some water and walk on water. I mean, you know, the, give me some water. It's just a good insight. I used to get so many Westerns when I was a kid. Yeah, know? yeah. All right, I'm going to do one more thing before we go. I want to give you three songs just that I'm going to pick off the album here real quick. Just give me a, a quick sentence, one sentence about how you feel about that song, okay? Just one quick sentence. I'm just going to read off a random song or two, okay? Um, here we go. My Friends, My Friends. Uh, my Friends, My Friends is about uh, just about a lot of people that I never saw again that I was very, very close to. And it's also about that lost a couple of friends earlier in life that had the died in car accidents and, and got hit by cars and, you know, drug overdoses. It's, it's, it's kind of a sad, melancholy song, but it, it's, a, it's a beautiful song. And I like the harmonica solo in it. I do, too. Okay. okay I, got a chance, I got a chance to play dramatic harmonica, and that was a lot of fun. Shaken. How about Shaken? Well, Shaken, uh, I had a guy named uh, Gary Ferguson, and he was a, he'd worked as, he was a drummer on a strip ball. He says to me, I'm going to give you the greatest strip beat in the world. I'm writing it myself. And I'm going to write, it, write a song. And, you know, he gave me this really sexy. I mean, if you think about shaking, it just sounds like you're in the middle of a, of a men's club, in a gentleman's club. I'm with a girl. It's a very sexy, you know, take it, all, take it all off kind of beat. And, of course, Abalonia was in the video. That was the first thing she ever did. Yes, it is. Before she even did Perfect Rain. Yep, yep. And shaking was a lot of fun. And people just, we love the song because, you know, uh, well. I'm always walking, you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's just a really good tune. And when I play with Gary Ferguson again, I always call him Mr. Shaken. He gave me that great beat, you know. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Shaken. He's Mr. Shaken. You're Mr. Money, Mr. Eddie Money. Listen, Eddie, we're going to go, but listen, like I said, please don't hang up. We're just going to end the program, put you on hold for one quick segment. We want to talk to you off the air real fast. But again, thank you so much for rocking the mic right here on good old KQCK Radio with Joe C. and Brian Shank. We really, really enjoyed your yeah, time Yeah, thank today. you so much, Eddie. Always nice to talk to you, man. And we look forward to seeing you at the show uh, Absolutely. coming up here well, very shortly. It's 
better talk to me on the phone. I don't want to be another rock star that puts, up, puts a book out that nobody wants to read. <laughs> <laughs> no way, baby. If you write a book, I guarantee we'll be reading it for sure. But we're going to end the show right now. Eddie, stay on the phone for just a second. We're going to put you on hold just for a second or two. And thank you, everybody, for listening and rocking the mic here with Brian Shank and Joe C on KQCK with my good buddy, the icon, the legend, the master, the Lord of Levittown, Mr. Eddie Money.